Between middle school and high school, I was suspended over 30 times. Stink bombs, F-bombs, you name it, bombs. <laughs> the worst thing I did in school? Smashed my backpack through the principal's glass coffee table. Did he deserve it? Debatable. <laughs> he was short and bald with a Napoleon complex. He called me Troublemaker. I called him Elmer Fudd. <laughs> troublemaker, a person who habitually causes difficulty or problems, especially by inciting others to defy those in authority. <laughs> and you guys gave me a microphone and an audience. <laughs> I look at difficulty and problems as solutions, innovations, modifications. See, I'm a positive thinker and believer. To doctors, teachers, parents, officers, friends, strangers, it's time for change. We need to start instilling positive mindsets and affirmations that encourage growth and potential with today's youth. Instead of continuing on with this trend of negative labels and associations that confine and constrict so many young people. By the time I was 11, I was diagnosed with ADHD, Tourette's, and OCD. ADHD, I was just hyper, intelligent, and full of life. Tourette's, I just love to cuss. <laughs> Did I listen to Eminem? Absolutely. I was understood when I put on his music. I cussed because I was mad at the world for taking my father from me. I felt wrong because the man I called dad passed away when I was six years old. OCD, it was the only way I could have control in my life. My stability and trust was shaken. My mom had to attend all of my soccer practices because I was afraid that if she were to leave, she'd drive away and die and abandon me too. Those labels made me feel inferior. I was taught that Corey Martin Craig was a bad child, an underdog without a future. With nothing to lose, I acted out more to the point I was given multiple medications to try and fix my problems. Did that medication settle me down? No. Did I stop cussing? <laughs> no. Did I feel safe and secure? No, I was worse off than I was before. What did the medication do? Make me fat. Risperidol is a terrific side effect of dramatic weight gain. <laughs> Stud McMuffins. I weighed 10 pounds more as an eighth grader than I do today. Where'd the curls come from? I wanted to fit in for once and look like NSYNC's Justin Timberlake. <laughs> Luckily for me, my aunt was a hairdresser, so I got a permanent. <laughs> I could do no right. I was locked up twice for angry outbursts. I was up against the wall and was plummeting. Labels and medications were a negative death hold on me and my life seemed to not be my own. Alone, I cried frequently and dreamed of being someone else. I masked the pain with humor so nobody could see what was going on inside. Adam Sandler taught me that Goofy was okay. But the underlying fact was that I was hurting. There were days after being told that I was the worst student that ever walked through the doors and being called fat ass, that I'd walk home, pick up a knife, and ask myself, is today the day? Positive interventions saved my life. I was lucky because I garnered a select few positive advocates. I had the most amazing mother who instilled in me the belief that anything in life is possible. A special ed principal who listened to my colorful yet vulgar rants on a daily basis. <laughs> A Spanish teacher who didn't call me troublemaker or insubordinate, rather an intuitive thinker. <laughs> Whatever the hell that means, I bought into it. <laughs> it was a positive spin to an otherwise consistently negative outlook on my behavior. And I had a school-appointed mentor who came to visit every week. During one suspension, he picked me up and told me we were going for lunch. Lunch must have been code word for juvenile corrections, because that's where we wound up. <laughs> Ten minutes locked away in a holding cell. Worst part, on the way home, he didn't even stop for lunch. <laughs> I found a positive outlet, acting. Unlike other classes where I was reprimanded for my antics, I was encouraged there. I thrived because for 45 minutes a day, I could transform into someone else. I could laugh and cry and sing and yell and cuss like a sailor. Coincidentally enough, most of my characters were sailors. <laughs> Sophomore year, I found out my high school was losing funding in the arts, meaning acting class, the one place and one reason I went to school. So I intuitively researched and applied to the Los Angeles County High School for the Arts. Shortly thereafter, I decided to stop taking medications. I was done being overweight, overanalyzed, criticized, because that almost led to my demise. One day in May, after coming home from school, I got to the mailbox and saw a letter 
from the Los Angeles County High School for the Arts, and I opened it ever so delicately, and saw I was accepted. <laughs> I went up to my front porch and set the letter down with tender, loving care, and ran to my corner where I could see my current high school and flipped it off, <laughs> saying, I'm out of here. I called my mom crying, boogers coming out my nose. She thinks I'm suspended again, and I say, no, Ma, it's good news. We're out of stinking Lincoln. <laughs> My support team celebrated that move. And with that positivity, my mom sold our house and her wedding ring so we could afford to move 1,500 miles from Lincoln, Nebraska to Los Angeles, California. I had a new reason to wake up each and every morning. The sun and air was different in LA. Did I still occasionally struggle? Sure. <laughs> but I was now a thespian and not a troublemaker. No <laughs> negative labels as far as the eyes could see. I was filled with light instead of darkness. I was the theater department speaker at the Los Angeles County High School for the Arts graduation at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion with my opening statement. To find out what you want to do at an early age is a gift. To be able to act upon that knowledge is a blessing. Positivity guided me to that perspective. I followed my yellow brick road and still do every single day of my life. I'm on a journey to make it in Hollywood. I can proudly say that with positivity, hope, and belief in myself. I've already acted on television shows for ABC, Fox, Showtime, have been in independent films, and was in Godzilla, only to be cut out. But hey. <laughs> <laughs> positivity. I know in my heart my time is coming. <laughs> Two years ago, I received an email telling me my mentor had passed away. I flew back to show my respect and gratitude towards him and to let go of my grudge of never getting that lunch. <laughs> <laughs> While I was in town, my Spanish teacher asked me to come speak to her classes. I did. I told the students my story and that anything in life is possible. The next day, I headed back to LA. Within a week, I was inundated with messages from students, parents, siblings thanking me. My late mentor and Spanish teacher gave me an opportunity to pay it forward to pass on the great positivity that saved my life. That summer, I founded the nonprofit Troublemaker Foundation on the basis of goal setting and these three core beliefs. Accept, empower, achieve. Accept. Who you are right now is perfect, just the way you are. Whatever cards you were dealt, that's you, and you are amazing. Empower. This is all about positivity. Spread out as you go up. Go out of your way to make someone's day. What's your name? Kelly. Kelly, I love your sweater. <laughs> It can be as simple as that, but if you set off a positive ripple, you never know how large that wave can become. Achieve. Whether it's small victories or great success, it's all in the same. Achieving is knowing that life is a journey and should be enjoyed to its fullest. As John Wooden said, make each day your masterpiece. Through Troublemaker Foundation, I've come back and spoken at many Lincoln area schools. I've seen the power of positivity and encouragement. Students raise their hands and tell me their goals, some small, some out of this world. I flip them a troublemaker bracelet after because goals should be encouraged. I witness aspiring singers sing verse after verse in front of their classmates because of support from their peers and belief in themselves. One student said, I would like to be the first person to fly solo to the moon. That's a dream literally shooting for the stars. <laughs> One student raised her hand and said, I would like to bridge the gap between my parents and their understanding of me being a transgender. A high school classroom or auditorium filled with positivity is limitless. I believe that when each and every person does one positive thing a day for another person, this whole world can change overnight. As ironic as the name Troublemaker Foundation is, I have fully accepted that negative label and now look at it positively and with pride. To me, Steve Jobs, Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela were all troublemakers. All three had a desire for positive change and set out to accomplish that task. And if you didn't know already, Nelson Mandela's birth name was Holisasa, which when translated means troublemaker. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Let's squash negativity. We as a society are too quick to judge and to diagnose. We are conditioned with negative thoughts, feelings, emotions. Let's rock positivity. Let's celebrate environments where kids feel safe to explore their talents and the true genuine person they are instead of being shunned. Let's celebrate positive labels and outlooks. Let's nurture and lift hopes and dreams. I'll start. My name is Corey Martin Craig. I'm an actor, writer, producer. I'm a believer, achiever, intuitive thinker, and yes, I am a troublemaker. Life is a choice and you are in control of it. It starts with one, one belief in yourself 
accept, one desire to strive for a goal, and one positive ripple towards another person daily, empower, one team, and one outcome, achieve. Thank you.